Hey guys, how's it going? We're here with another deck profile. This time we're going to be look, taking a look at pandas. So this is the deck I'd, you had uh, seen me do a gameplay against against Oscars Mikage that actually did really good against him. Like I said, there's a lot of ways I think pandas can go. My way I decided to go just mono yellow and just a lot of uh, uh, combinations and things like that is, is what I enjoyed doing. This deck list was made before the entire set was spoiled. So the three cards mainly that I would look at to add to it possibly was a uh, gem beast, which is two cost six, six, and you gain a gem of any attribute. Um, and that's really good, especially for gaining any gem you want, not just like a light gem. And a six, six for, for two cost isn't too bad. Jewel bullet, so having a yellow uh, uh, damage is really good, neat, I think. As well as uh, it doesn't have quick cast, which isn't necessarily good. However, um, it, it does help in situations where, say, you're going against a green deck with the card that cancels target quick cast card. You're able to technically avoid that. Um, in my deck, it might not. It, it'd be something I put in the side deck, perhaps, because I'd prefer Zero's Magic Light, even though it has the quick cast. But yeah. And lastly, is profitable transactions, which is a one cost quick cast. And depending on the gem you banish, it gets different effects. So blue, you get to, I think it's bounce, resonator, green, you draw a card and so on and so forth. So it's pretty cool and very versatile. So that one I'll probably definitely put in at some point. So we'll go on to the deck itself. We'll start with the side deck. So the side deck, I have um, Tigress, the, the ruler itself. So I put in the side deck just because for the main deck, I think the other ruler works a lot better for uh, most situations. Certain situations, Tigress might work better, so that's why he's in the side deck, especially for up, upping up the gem production and different things like that. I run a Soul Envoy of Light, and that's just to basically bring out basic magic stones because I also have basic magic stones in there, four of them to replace this four special magic stones that are in the stone deck currently. So I can run a mono deck to help counter things like Hook and other things possibly. And it's to help combo with Soul to bring out those stones a lot quicker to help sort of balance out. Since I have better gem production with the ruler, I can concentrate more and bring out more mana or uh, a will to do different things. Next, I have three uh, Jewel Burst for obvious reasons. It's for more destruction depending on the deck you're going against. I don't want it in the main deck because there's a lot of decks that are not very resonator heavy. So this is good in the side deck. So when you go against those resonator heavy decks to help counter them. Uh, two zero the King's Blade. So for obvious reasons to help my uh, stop my opponent from drawing certain things uh, when going against certain blue decks and uh, different things like that. And then uh, three Dreams of Flight. So this is to give things flying since there isn't a whole lot of flying in this deck. So if I go against a deck that has a heavy emphasis on flying, this will help counter it as well as give that extra buff obviously and the remnant makes it really nice. We'll start with the stone deck. So this is moving on to the main deck. For the stone deck, it's pretty straightforward. I run six light magic stones and four ore of the treasure mountain, as you'd expect. Uh, for the ruler, I do zero, six, sage of the light. I do this because it, um, her passively being able to make zero's magic light the chant cost one is really nice. And having a two cost judgment that helps me basically shut down not only resonators, but J rulers is really strong. And especially in this format where black moon beam is no longer a problem, I think she's extremely helpful in a lot of situations. On the deck itself, I run three Shin Shin and Ray Ray, the acrobatic twins. So these are really awesome because it comes in, you banish two light magic uh, light uh, stones, gems, gems, and uh, search your deck for any panda you want and put it into the field. So you can do things like the combo I did where I pay, put it on there, paid the two light magic gems, searched my deck, grabbed another one, paid two gems, searched my deck, got that panda that recovers four stones. So by only playing one card, so they can't cancel anything with Severing Winds, I got three pandas and I only spent one will at the end of the day. So it's really cool combos like that that are really good. I run four Orfika, Dancer in the White Mist. So she's the two cost that when she comes in, she blinks a resonator and it comes back in at end of turn. So you can blink things like the resonator that recovers four stones so that you recover those stones. Um, when it enters, you pay the two for Ofika, pay two for something else, and then blink it back in and you recover those four stones going into your opponent's turn to play quick cast cards. And she also buffs your pandas and when she hits the graveyard, you get to search your deck for a panda and put it into your hand. So she's just good all around. There's, you want to run her four for, I think, in, in every panda deck. 
I run four of Gemblade Emeralds, so this is pretty straightforward. When it enters your field, it recovers four will. So there's no reason not to run this. It's a free card as long as it's not canceled, but you know, that's always a possibility. And like I said, it combos with Shin Shin, but it, it's just no reason not to run four of them. I run four Discovery, so this one cost quick cast. You draw a card and gain a gem of any attribute. Run four of this because it's perfect. <laughs> it's a great card for this deck. I run three Jewel Sword. So this is the one where you gain a gem of any attribute and it buffs your pen or any resonator by its attack. Great, because it's quick cast. You can do it in response to things. And it's good because it's one cost to gain you a gem of any attribute. So you're just trying to get as many gems as you can. And then I run three Jewel Shield, exact same thing, but reverse, it gives you defense. I uh, run this to make certain things survive. It helped me in the game a little bit to make th certain things survive that otherwise wouldn't have, plus gain extra gems, four different things. Uh, one thing I should have mentioned is when I looked at this deck, and I recommend doing this as well, is I counted how many cards I have that produce gems, and I did them, uh, added them together of how many max gems I could produce. And then I counted the cards that remove gems and count the max gems that would get removed. And you want to make sure that the gems you get is always higher than the amount that you get removed so you don't get stuck at a certain point. And so that's something you want to always look at so you're not producing a crazy amount of gems that you don't need to and you can replace those cards with something else. And on the reverse side, you're not removing so many gems that you can't repopulate them. But moving on, I run four Gem Trader. So this one cost Resonator comes in and you gain a Light Gem. Really good, especially early game to sort of get some blockers on the field and also get that gem production going really early on. I run two Gem Blade Sapphire. I run this just because it's good to have flyers on the field. So just put this in as long as you have the corresponding gem. So you have a blocker or a flyer to swing in and different things like that. I run two of Diamond, the One-Eyed Treasury Magician. So when he comes in, anytime you produce a gem, it buffs all your resonators plus two plus two. And he can also give a resonator or a J resonator barrier. So he is really good. He, you can ga grab him with Shin Shin if you want, depending on what combination you want to do. Or you can just straight play him. I only run two of them. Maybe I'll downsize it to one. It depends how well he ends up playing. He didn't uh, play too well against Oscar, but it was also a Mikage deck, so I'd be curious how it does outside of that. 4-7 uh, runs for obvious reasons. This You need some sort of counters in most decks, and this is the only counter that's in here. But it's a good one, and it's a free one, so obvious reasons. 3 White Raven for, once again, put a flyer on the field to help block flying, and it can also banish a, a, a magic gem to draw a card. So just good overall to have uh, some extra draw power but also the flying if you don't want to draw a card i run one riula alabaster dragon princess and so i run this because uh in case my zero or whatever ruler i'm running dies being able to revive it is really strong because they can't just black moon beam it for free now they actually have to for the most part work to kill it so once they kill it they, that's usually their one kill mechanism so being able to bring it back out i think is is really strong in this format Potentially, so we'll see. I haven't been able to put that into practice yet. I run four zeros magic light for obvious reasons. It's a one cost with the zero ruler. So one cost being able to just remove from game a resonator, attacking or defending resonator so it doesn't get any effects from hitting the graveyard, as well as being able to move out of the way to put damage through or get rid of a heavy hitter for one cost is, is just really strong, especially in light decks. And lastly, I run one Glorious, the Silver Knight. So this is the resonator from uh, Curse of the Frozen Casket that when it enters, it destroys target J ruler that, that dealt damage this turn. And it has quick cast. So it's, uh, uh, I ran it ba basically, uh, and I already run one of it because I want something to be able to kill J rulers if, the time, if it comes down to it where I can't kill it for some reason or I'm having trouble with it, I want the option to be able to do that. So I only run one of it and it's quick cast so I can play on my opponent's turn so I can swing with it in my turn and different things like that. But it's just basically a backup to help kill J rulers or really strong resonators that don't have barrier. But yeah, so I really enjoyed this deck. It was a lot of fun. Um, I, I really like how pandas are doing. I'm curious how it'll run and once I put in things like profitable transactions is the main one I'm pretty excited about. But it did really good against Oscar's Mikage deck. I'll be running it more after pre-release this weekend. It's uh, pre-release so won't be able to run it yet but at some point I'll be able to run it and 
I'm curious what other people's ideas for it. I'll try to create a dual color version of it at some point because I think it has a lot of potential with that as well. But yeah, so let me know what you guys think below and uh, join our Discord if you want to talk about it later on. And uh, uh, subscribe for more deck profiles, gameplay, news. We've got a lot of, I keep saying this, but we have a lot of exciting stuff coming up that's in the works that we'll be announcing within the next week or two. So stay tuned for all of that.